Jesus ready for an amazing day? Yes. Yes. I am. Well, you know, I am. I love high energy. I am ready as well too. The Fearless Platform started in 2010 here in LA, and oh my gosh, um, I know Maisha Oliver's is probably all the way back in the other room right now, still getting ready. And I don't remember if Trey Haley is even here yet, but there's some. Oh, Trey! Okay, because I was giving y'all a shout out, no, because. These are the people that helped me build this brand from day one in 2010. From beginning to end. And I want to encourage you right now that we bring kingdom wherever we go. Yes. That in the marketplace, you bring kingdom. Yes. When I walk into a room, I shift an atmosphere because I have the Holy yes. Spirit inside yes. of me. So never feel like you have to choose one or the other. Because we need to look up, but we need to look out. Because it's women like us that are changing the world, changing culture, right. making a mark. So yes. never feel like you have to choose the two. But always remember that your business will reveal your brokenness yes. and your breakthrough is not just for you. Yes. One of the parts of my testimony was when, and I think that's everybody's testimony, when things look the worst, and that's when God comes in. But when things look the worst, there are times that we can take that pain still, even with God, we take that into our next season. So the one thing that I struggled the most with, with my business and with starting, um, and with launching anything was I always had those uh, those parts where I remember what people said or I remember the looks that people gave me. I remember when people told me that I wasn't enough. I remember all of those negative things and those would replay every time I had an idea. And so I would have notebooks full of ideas and I would just look at them and be like, Lord, I just, just pray over them, just pray over them, Lord. But he was like, girl, I gave you a strategy. Will you start? <laughs> with like opposition and still pushing through in faith. So speak to us and tell us how you push through in the face of opposition. I love that. And thank you for admitting to It's This Talking because we all do it. Okay, we all do it. Um, yeah, so in life and business, there's so much opposition. Who in this room has had some sort of opposition, right? Yes, we, there's almost, yeah, especially when you love Jesus, right? And, okay, so I'm just going to give you all a quick example because this actually happened really recently. But a few weeks ago, I was supposed to be on vacation, enjoying my time. I work a ton because I'm doing about four different things right now. And I was like, I need, this is my first trip all year, and I'm going to take this time to rest and rejuvenate. And it was on that trip that somehow every single day of that trip was just not what I thought it was going to be. So first, something with work came up, and it was just like, wait, really, God? That's happening right now? Okay, and then secondly, with the guy, something with the guy happened. Then I felt all this heartbreak, and with the friend that I was on on the trip, suddenly, all of a sudden, we we had never had a fight ever in our entire lives, and all of a sudden, we found ourselves in a really deep, crazy conflict. And then on the 4th of July, this is extremely recent, y'all, um, I got a text from a family member about an extremely difficult situation um, that is the biggest pain point in my life. And so it was all these things day after day after day, and. Um, and then I was reminded that morning before I got the text from my family member um, about the thing that was going on with one of um, with my father. Um, I listened to this song called "Peace Be Still," and I just want to bring this up for for a moment, y'all. And so, in the Gospels, if you remember, I think it's in Matthew, but Jesus has the disciples, right? And he's like, "We're going to go across the Sea of Galilee," and they get on the ship, and they're like, "He's like, he tells them where we're going to go." And so they get on the ship, it's going to be, but he still moved in the face of fear. And so I love that, you know, even if you feel fear, you can still do it by the way of the Holy Spirit. Because it's not by might, not by power, but by his spirit that you can do all that God has called you to. So this next question is for Miss Kim, who is the minister, who I feel like you just got to preach for us coming. <laughs> Um, you are a woman of many hats. Like you manage a lot of different responsibilities. So please tell us how you're able to manage that and what role God plays in all of that. Um, so just to uh, give you guys just a, a little insight for those that don't follow me, if you have your smartphones, be smart and follow me. <laughs> <laughs> My name is B. Kim Lee on uh, social media. But aside from that, I um, I do have a lot of responsibilities, and God has caused me to be able to juggle life. Um, in a very unusual way. Um, and one of the things that I do um, that 
I actually absolutely love, and I, and I tell people, this is actually on my page, I'm a trailblazer and a fire starter. And um, when I say that, I say that very confidently. And I say that because throughout the Bible, anyone that was great was always a visionary. And um, the Bible talks about the woman, the Proverbs 31 woman, and I know you all know this story, but specifically it says that she saw the land, and she obtained it, and she bought it. If you give me some land, I'm going to make a vineyard. So when I think about Michelangelo, and he saw the limestone, he created a masterpiece. If you give me the limestone, I'm going to create a masterpiece only by God. And so some of the prayers that I pray is God continue to give me vision. I don't pray for cars, clothes, and cash because that's going to come. What I pray for is wisdom, and I pray for vision. And the reason why I pray for that because it allows me to be able to start things and to be able to finish them out. I'm so thankful to be able to say that I've started so many projects 20, 15 years before some artists are starting them now. And I don't say that to, to make them feel bad. I say that because somebody had to pave the way. I thank God that God made me a trailblazer. I thank God that God created me to be a fire starter. And so some of those things have come again from just being able to be very, very prayerful. And I really, really pattern my life by things that, in the, that are in the word. And, 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 and constantly, I know we say, he's the part of we are the play, the clay, mold, shape, make. Do you guys really know what that means? Do you know the process of going through a molding over and over again? There are sticks in dirt. And when the clay is made, it's made out of dirt and it's made out of water, that's spirit. And when God is molding you, he gotta pluck out sticks and it don't feel good. And a lot of us don't want that molding. We say, I wanna be a vase, I wanna be something fabulous, I wanna be great, but we don't wanna be plucked out. We don't want those things to be plucked out of us. And one of the things I've done is I've surrendered my life, and I know it's not going to feel good. I know that with every time I trailblaze something, it's not going to feel good. Nobody wants to till land. We just want to see the flowers grow. Who wants to be out there with those bricks and build and build and build, and your fingers hurt till they bleed? No one really wants to do that. I don't want to do it, but it's my call. But my word would be consistency. If you're not consistent with your word, consistent getting up every morning praying, consistent with your business, even when nobody shows up, even when nobody buys your t-shirt, you have to be consistent because there are people that God has created you for. So when you're going after your destiny, you have to be consistent with it and relentless and trust in God and just lean on him knowing that it's not you and it's him that will get the glory. So I love you guys and you these amazing women. Business partnership is no different from a marriage, a relationship with your boyfriend or your girlfriend or what have you. There's nothing different. You have to respect the other person. You don't have to always be right, even when you are. You allow that person, sometimes you just have to say, you know what, I'm gonna let her have it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And even when you wanna be like, you know what, you were so wrong. <laughs> you don't have to always tell them that they're wrong. Right. And so, like I said, it's just a matter of treating that person like you would treat anyone else that you're in a relationship with and find that respect. That's how businesses grow. Yes. If there are 12, thank you, if there are 12 bakeries um, within a 10 mile radius, uh, everybody's doing similar things, what's the point of having that? If I am strong over here, we're strong over here doing, let's say, meat pies, and this person over here is strong in doing something else, why not collaborate and have one dynamic company that can literally take over? I'll share one quick story and then I'll pass this mic. When we, um, when, in the beginning of our business, we were working with a celebrity chef. And this person would call us to order desserts for some of his you know, uh, celebrity clients. And, and people would say, well, why don't you have him put your name or, or say where he gets. Oftentimes there's one person that kind of steps out to be more of the face or gets a little bit more recognition. And if you don't have a strong foundation, that can kind of rock the other person who feels like they're being slighted or you know whatever the case may be. Here's the thing that I think helps in those scenarios 
you have to be very confident in knowing your role, what you bring, and understanding that none of it can work without you too. Exactly. Right. Exactly. None of it. So it doesn't matter how many times the other person gets their picture taken or that somebody, she and I laugh because people pronounce her name better, it's easier, so they say her name more or you know, that sort of thing. It can be like the silliest things that can kind of, you know, mess with your confidence like, well, wow, am I not, you know, doing a great job? It's none of that. With Southern Girl Desserts, if she left, nothing would happen. If I left, nothing would happen. It takes every single thing that both of us yes. bring to make that company go. Yeah. That's good. And I think that people get caught up in uh, titles. <laughs> and she and I actually, we had, <laughs> we had a retreat. We take time with each other. We, we went, we spent a weekend locked up in a hotel room discussing goals and things that we wanted to see, growth of the business, all this stuff. And during that meeting, we said, okay, look, well, let's figure out what our titles are gonna be. And we weren't, agree we weren't in agreement. Our egos were. Uh, we weren't in agreement. But guess what we said? You know what, this is our business. We can say we don't have titles. <laughs> Who gonna check me, boo? <laughs> First, give a warm, huge shout out to the two. Uh, your products speak to the way that you live your life. And I want to know, was that something that you intentionally crafted for your life, or did you kind of stumble upon it? Uh, most times, those things are mutually exclusive. So it's really, really a privilege to be able to marry the two. Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, so the way I got involved in Suja, um, it happened pretty organically. <laughs> Um, I was playing tennis, uh, for, in college I played tennis, um, and I had all these food issues. I struggled, I was constantly sick, doctors couldn't figure out what was wrong with me, um, and it turned out that I developed a parasite from um, a transformative trip I took to Kenya when I was 18. Um, and from that trip, I actually, when I was 18, I started a bottled water company called Nika Water. Um, I was transformed by the world water crisis and the fact that girls weren't going to school because they had to walk for water. And I was coming, I came back and I was going to college and I was just like, I'm getting this amazing education and there's girls all over the world that don't have that privilege. And that was when Invisible Children and Tom's, the one for one model um, of buying shoes and giving shoes um, to people in need. And so I thought, why can't I do that here? And so I started a bottle water company um, and for every bottle sold, we donated clean water to people around the world. Um, and it was great, it lasted for five years and it just didn't stick. I had a hard time getting it into stores. Um, people were buying it, but I couldn't get enough distribution, and it was just a sign that the world didn't need another water company at the time, that there was something bigger for me. Mm -hmm. So made the really hard decision to shut that company down. And at that time, um, my uncle actually had these two kids that were um, making juice in Southern California out of their house, very like milkman style, mm -hmm. and delivering it on skateboards to people in their community. And juice was a big part of my life because having all these issues with my gut, um, juice was something that I could turn to to get nutrients and um, help with food. Um, and so I got involved in that and it just happened right when I was shutting down the water company, this juice company was starting and I got involved. I was the seventh or eighth person. Um, my mom always instilled in me that, you know, you gotta go to school, you gotta go to college, you gotta work your job and work that nine to five job until it's time for you to retire at the age of 60. And then you enjoy life. So, you know, that was always told to me growing up as a child. And so my mom, her thing was, to, she wanted to be a nurse, but she couldn't um, go to school because of financial reasons. So she kind of pushed her dream off on me. Um, and I remember her always saying that, you know, you can become a nurse, you know, you'll always have a job, you, it's recession proof, you know, you make good money, and so all of her friends were nurses. Um, so that's what I, that's all that I was exposed to growing up. I wasn't exposed to entrepreneurs, I wasn't exposed to women that own their own business. So even though as a little girl, I've always envisioned myself having a business, I just didn't think that that was attainable because I wasn't exposed to that growing up. So I decided to do what my mom told me to do because I wanted to make her happy. I wanted to walk across that stage with my little nursing cap and my pen, and that's what I did. I went to nursing school, and 
after, so I graduated nursing school at the age of 21. I was pregnant with my first daughter and I started working in labor and delivery. Um, so I was working in women's health. And um, I remember stepping foot on the nursing floor and I told myself like, you know, this is great. You know, I enjoy working with my patients, um, but this was not something that I wanted to do for the rest of my life. I couldn't see that um, because I would look at my senior nurses and, you know, they were older, but they were miserable and they were bitter. Like they were so mean to like the new young girls coming in. They were so mean. And you know, another thing that I noticed is they could barely walk. Like they had bad knees, they had bad backs, because nursing, you know, it puts a toll on your body. And I said, that's not how I want to be. When, like when I'm 60 and I retire, I still want to be young and fit and you know, I still want to look good. Like I don't want to be old, miserable, and bitter. So that wasn't a good example for me. <laughs> I mean, I did it. I would like to know a couple of things. One, when did you know that you had grown beyond the salon? And how did you have the courage to step out on faith? You know, all of you guys, I consider comfort zone disruptors, right? And that's what we're trying to produce today. Whatever your comfort zone is, I need you to push it, I need you to disrupt it, because that is when you get to the other side and really start um, exploring new things, new perspectives, new success for yourself. So can you tell me like, what courage that took or if it even took that, you just knew it was time to go. <laughs> well, one, I never even really wanted to do hair in the beginning. I was going to Cal State Long Beach, poli sci major. <laughs> uh, poli sci major. Uh, but my son did graduate from FAMU. <laughs> just like all the had to say. Right. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> and so I never really wanted to do hair. I did everyone's hair. I played in hair. At lunchtime, I went to all-girl Catholic school. I was doing everybody's hair before we went out, you know, to see the boys, you know, after school, I was slicking ponytails. You know, back then, we had all the business going on. Um, I did all of that. Um, I, my mom was like, hey, you need, you, you're having way too much fun in college. You really need to just go do hair. And I was like, hair? <laughs> hair? Like, <laughs> why would I do hair? Like, I'm going to be a lawyer. And she was like, no, you're not. <laughs> and I was like, okay. So I went to hair school, fell in love, never looked back, okay? Um, I still actually work in the salon. I still work in the salon. I still have day-to-day -day clients. My whole philosophy behind what I do is everyone is a celebrity that sits in my chair. And I do that from the bottom of my head. say that, I used to always joke with my clients. I'm like, yeah, as long as you can sign that autograph at the end of the service, then you, you're a celebrity too. And they would be like, okay, like the credit card receipt. But you know, it's like, <laughs> but I really, really feel that way. Um, my clients come to me not because of my ability to do hair. My clients come to me for other reasons besides that. I have celebrity clients that come to me because not because they want to be beautiful, right? Because they're already beautiful, right? That's not why they come to me. They come to me is because I offer something more than my ability to do hair. Right. I offer them love, respect, and spirituality. And I can push them beyond what other people see. That we feel that we've fallen a bit short of our goal. How do you treat yourself? Because challenges are really just a constant tool for course correction. That's how I see it. So how do you treat yourself when you have fallen a bit short? Just three words. Go. Or go for it. Mm -hmm. Whoever has one. You can start with. Oh, okay. Um, how do I overcome those challenges? How do you treat yourself in it? For me, I have to go and buy a lip gloss. It makes me go. Uh, <laughs> do you take a bag? Do you go shopping? What is that one thing that gets you back to your center? That wellness? Oh, probably. Okay. Hey, I, 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 I can go back. <laughs> um, for me, I'm a firm believer in things don't happen to you, they happen for you. And when challenges come, I immediately, my family, family and friends fix everything. Um, okay, I would say um, forgiveness. Yes, Annie. Yes. I, uh, I am very hard on myself. I am my own worst critic. Mm. No skincare company can go up against me because they're up, I'm up against me. Yeah. So, um, I, yeah, forgiveness is my tool, and 
I'm going to make this really brief, very, very brief, because I know we're going to get in trouble. One thing I want to say is in forgiveness is that if, if you are wanting to be an entrepreneur and you want to grow something, keep an eye on where you're growing. Because you're in grow mode in the beginning, more followers, more products, more people need to know about my brand, more retailers, more money, more investors. And then at a certain point when you're kind of leveling off, you're like, okay, wait, I don't really want to grow to Target, or I don't want to grow to Sephora, or it's, this is too much for me, I'm not a business person, this is out of control, and I'm starting to feel scared. You can, you can bring people on to help you, or you can forgive yourself and just be like, you know what I mean? Like your journey and your journey, it's, 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 um, it becomes in a myriad of ways, and if you can practice forgiveness and just say, this is where I'm at right now, and this is, how much money do I actually need? How much clout do I actually need? I'm just gonna, I'm gonna roll this out for a little bit. And, and, and I don't know, I think you'll find a, a different part of yourself in that process. Um, I have a lot of challenges day to day. And I think, I mean, I grew up between Hawaii and Alaska and very outdoorsy. And for me, when I need to find my center, I go up for a hike, I go to the ocean and just stare at the water. So just kind of getting away and we live in a very busy city and there's always noise so finding that place for me that's like in nature and being one with nature even it's just at the beach is like where I kind of collect myself. In entrepreneurship I've realized uh, very quickly that things are always going to go wrong and I accept it. So I accept it as a part of the territory and so when things are a little off kilter I, I sit back, I try to understand what happened, and then I get into like super solution mode to, to figure out how to, how to problem solve. And then I think the, the centering part for me is just reminding myself that I am enough and I have exactly what it takes to get it done. So really just believing in like my most confident self. Um, so I would say meditation and affirmation and I would say meditation because I feel that if we keep God at the center of everything, you know, he's always first and everything else will come into place. Um, I feel that also, you know, sometimes we can be so busy talking to God and telling God what we need, but we don't take the time to be still and let him talk to us so we, and, let, and listen to what he's saying to us because he's always speaking to us. But when we're always on the go, 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 we can't listen. Um, and affirmations um, because... You know, life is life in general is always going to throw curveballs at you. Being a business, especially, you're always going to have challenges, but it's how you react to those challenges and those obstacles. And every day, I tell myself when I wake up in the morning, today is going to be a good day. No matter what life throws at me, today is going to be a good day because I know who has me and I know that I don't have to worry because he has my future covered. I would like to say, and I want you guys to say this. Everything in life is temporary. Everything, Everything in life, life is, is temporary. temporary. That means that every situation that happens, it's only for that moment. Even if the moment is a month, even if the moment is two months, six months, or a year, it's still temporary. It's not the same thing that it was two years ago or five years ago. Everything in life is temporary. And when you are going through something and it's an avalanche, the best thing that you can do is get on top of the avalanche. So while things are crumbling, if you surf on top, yes, you know it's an avalanche, an avalanche underneath you. However, it's about you taking control of yourself and hitting everything head on. Amen. And to really ask yourself those questions on how you truly feel and not what you're just telling yourself. 
that you feel or the narrative that maybe someone else has given you that allows you to really hone in on your authentic truth. And in doing that, you learn so much about yourself and so much about your surroundings. Um, so meditation daily, um, and I think it has like really shifted my life and has shifted the people around me. I would say visit your doctor and be part of your health care. Ask questions. Ask to be tested for certain things. A lot of times in the office, as providers, we're just as busy as everybody else. So if you ask to say, hey, check my vitamin D level. Can you check my hemoglobin A1C? Let me see where am I, where am I in predisposed to diabetes. Let me see where I'm at with vitamin D because those are tests that are not routinely, if you don't fit the criteria, but you don't have to fit, you can always ask to get them done. Mine would be wise, godly counsel. A lot of people don't want to talk about getting, uh, going to see a psychologist or you know a counselor, but my husband and I go. He goes by himself, I go by myself, and we go together. And there is nothing wrong with getting counseling. <laughs> to relate emotional wellness and emotional in, uh, intelligence is so important because if you don't know how to relate to yourself as you're related to someone else especially being a new wife oh, geez. Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't be back yeah. be real. so I would say please get wise God the <laughs> regular sleeping and eating habits. So sleeping before midnight, you don't realize is so key. After that, you start to spike your stress hormones and it'll it'll have an effect, a domino effect on all your other hormones later. And same with eating regularly. You know, as entrepreneurs, you can go a long time without eating, you're busy, you're on the go, but you're gonna spike your, you're gonna drop your blood sugar levels, you're gonna make bad decisions, and then it, again, that will also have a domino effect on your hormones. So just be doing both of those things regularly. And so I feel like I want to summarize a little bit of what everybody said. I'm going to start down with uh, meditation and yoga, but also think about alternative methods uh, like acupuncture. Uh, I regularly use acupuncture, and I can say in addition to therapy, uh, it has made a world of difference for me. Um, and uh, I, I guess I want to do, uh, because I am the National Director of Health Equity, uh, I want to talk about closing the gap on health disparities. So I really want to encourage each of you to go into your practitioner, but also to educate yourself prior to that. There's a lot of trusted websites, a lot of trusted uh, uh, podcasts out there. Uh, please educate yourself so that you know what questions to ask your healthcare professional, your healthcare provider, and then and love yourself, like we said, where you are now, where you want to go, where you want to be. Love yourself first. Absolutely. Um, I want to uh, tell you guys, uh, can you please go to Close the Gap, BSC, and take a survey. We hope we provided some good tools for you guys. Um, I also, I tell my clients, there's three things I want you to take, a multivitamin, vitamin D, and melatonin to help with all of that, uh, sleep hygiene, everything. We hope that you learn some things. Go see your physician, go see your doctor, talk about it, do not internalize stress, okay? Thank you, ladies. Thank you.